like the mouse, this also covers the whole brain and the whole genome, but it uses a different method. Here we've got whole brain RNA microarray from six healthy adult brains. The teams dissected out each area of interest from each brain, isolated the RNA from that region, and applied the RNA to the microarray, where we read out the amount of transcript as fluorescence. Again, I'm not going to get into the detailed methods, but you can check out the documentation here for more detail. So like the ISH, this method also gives relative expression level, not absolute read counts of RNA. We are primarily going to be reporting the relative expression level as a z-score. And this z-score was calculated across the six donor brains, but only within one gene at a time, not across genes. So the genes are always treated independently. There's a couple of ways of searching this data as well. I'm going to focus on searching for a single gene. You can also search in bulk for these gene categories that are pre-selected with genes um, that are based on these different categories. And you can also search uh, in contrast to the mouse brain. So I'm going to search for one gene here. Um, so we, uh, when I search here, it pulls up this heat map. So the heat map is showing the Z score of the relative amount of gene uh, for this list of genes that I've pulled up. So I search for DRD. And it's actually pulling up uh, DRD1, DRD2, and if I scroll down, there'll be more, um, a little more DRD2. Um, so note that we have multiple probes for each gene. Um, these each target a different sequence of that gene. So each gene is going to appear more than once in the results. We have multiple probes for uh, about 95% of all of the genes. What you're looking at in this heat map is this top row is our six donors. So each of these uh, colored bars designates the data from one donor. The second row, each of these colored regions on this uh, bar color codes for the structure of the brain. And then um, I have this set to blue versus red. The default is red versus green, but we do have this alternate view that's colorblind friendly. Um, shows you the relative amount of the gene in that region. So uh, red is more, green is uh, less, or uh, red is more, blue is less in this view. So if I click on it, you can see that it tells me what brain structure have I just selected, and then a little bit about this gene, including the z-score of the expression level in that area. There's a couple of ways to interact with this data to get it into an anatomical context. Because this heat map is great. It gives a ton of information, but it doesn't really put it into any kind of anatomical context. Um, you can select multiple genes or probes using these uh, check boxes here. So I'm going to just choose DRD1 and DRD2. You can view the uh, heat map of just those that you've selected. And I had some selected from a previous search. And then you can also view those on thumbnails. So again, red is higher expression, blue is lower expression. Um, and this gives you each individual subjects overall view of the expression patterns of that gene. Or you can just view one gene at a time. So I've just gone back to the home, the uh, heat map here. You can also select in this gene info area, select gene symbol, and it's going to take you to a more detailed heat map. Um, that places, again, it's the same data that you're seeing on that, uh, that big heat map, just into an anatomical context. We also have the MRIs for each of these individuals. So if you want to pull this data and map it to your own, that we have the ability to do that. We also, and that's that MRI data is here. We also have a limited amount of ISH data for the human brain for some neurotypical individuals and some individuals with selected neuropsychological conditions. Unlike for the mouse brain, the human ISH data only covers selected brain regions and selected genes. Um, the ISH methods are otherwise similar to the mouse brain, and the data is interpreted in the same way. We also have data available on the developing human brain and the brain span atlas of the developing human brain. So that was also covered in that recent tutorial. So please check out that video. Uh, it's the same session for more information on how to access and analyze the data in that atlas. 
So for these humans and mouse atlases, there's uh, uncountable potential research applications. These are not comprehensive examples. They're just meant to get you started thinking uh, about uses of the atlases that are, uh, besides the most obvious use, which is just looking up what regions of the brain a gene of interest is highly expressed in. You can also do the inverse, uh, find what genes are highly expressed in an ROI. Um, identify genes with expression co-localized with your gene of interest. That's especially easy using that AGEA uh, explorer. Um, but you can also download the data and do uh, your own analyses to find that. You can look at the typical expression patterns for a gene that's been associated with a genetic disorder. In the microarray data of the whole human brain gene expression, um, these were all healthy individuals. Uh, so you can look up the typical gene expression patterns. You can find regions and networks where a gene is more highly expressed compared to other regions or networks. Um, look at expression patterns of gene, that it's homologs of interest from work in another species. And then including the developmental assays, you can look at uh, co-localizing genes in both space and developmental time and comparisons across species.